Kids? Are you kids here? Got, do I have your attention? Let me see. So kids, have you ever played the game hide and go seek? You play it? Raise your hand if you played it. Okay, so you know how the game goes. It's probably one of the simplest games, and it's probably one of the most fun games. When I was little, we played hide and go seek all the time. Um, we had a house. It had four floors to it, a basement, first floor, a second floor, and a whole walk-in attic. So we could have all kinds of places to hide. If we went outside, our house was on a campus, and there was all kinds of ditches and trees to hide in. So you remember how hide-and-seek goes, kids, right? You count. We always did Mississippi. Did you do up to 20 Mississippi? One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three. And then you got to 19 Mississippi, 20 Mississippi. And when you got done counting, what did you shout? Ready? Finish it for me. Ready? Or not? Here I come, right? And if you weren't ready, if it was 20 Mississippi, and you're trying to find that last tree to hide behind, what happened? You got found first, right? You had to be ready. That's kind of what God is ta talking about to you and me, about being ready. Because we're in the season of Advent now. Advent, remember that Latin word that just means coming? So as we start a new church year, Advent reminds us not only that Jesus came once in Bethlehem to save us, but he's going to come a second time and bring this world to an end. So when's that going to happen? When's Jesus going to come again? A lot of people think they know, right? Wasn't there back in September somebody was predicting the end, but then they decided to change their mind? Because no one knows. Listen to what Jesus said. No one knows about that day or hour. Not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Even Jesus, when he was on earth, and he set aside his powers as God, could say, I don't know the time when I'm coming back. Now Jesus is in heaven. He's taken his power back as God, and he knows exactly when he's coming back. But you and I don't know. So why hasn't God told us the exact day and hour that he's coming back? He hasn't told us because he knows us too well. Think back to when you were kids. Kids, here's another one for you kids. Are you paying attention? Got your attention? Do you ever have this happen to you? I had this happen. We're little kids and my mom says, kids, I'm going to the store. I'm going to be back at 5 o'clock. Now, before I get back, I want you to have the house cleaned up. So, Joel, it's your turn to clean the bathroom. Marty, you've got to clean the bedroom. Eileen, you've got to clean the kitchen. Have it all done by the time I get back. And guess what happened when she left? What do you think we did, kids? We watched TV. We goofed off. We played until it was about five minutes to five, and then we go, uh-oh, we're supposed to get the house cleaned. Do you think the house was clean? Uh-uh, it wasn't ready. You see why Jesus hasn't told us when he's coming back? Because he knows to keep us from being lazy spiritually, to keep us from thinking we can just get ready at the very last minute and not be ready at all. Because Jesus loves us so much, he has not told us the exact moment of when he's coming back so we'd be ready. So let me ask you all this. How are you doing at being ready for Jesus' coming back? Are you spending your time and energy wisely? As a pastor, I have a, an opportunity to be around a handful of Christians who have a really unique situation in that they actually know when Jesus is coming back. They know that because the doctor has told them they only have a certain amount of days or weeks to live. And what I find amazing is how those handful of Christians spend their time. And it got me to thinking, Joel, 
If I only had a week or two to live, how would I spend my time? What about you? If you only had a couple weeks, how would you spend your time? Would you be watching all the reruns of Seinfeld you could find or your favorite sitcom? Or would you spend your time talking and visiting with your family and friends and loved ones? Would you spend all that time, if you only had two or three weeks left, reading your favorite Tom Clancy novels or whatever they may be? Or would you spend time reading God's Word and His message of comfort for you? If you only had a few weeks left to live, would you go out and try to buy every toy you wished you have and did everything in your bucket list you haven't done yet? Or would you instead sit down and look at your finances and make sure you would leave amount of your finances to help your children and to leave some of your money to help the Lord's church? You see, that's the attitude that God wants you and me to have, to be ready, to act as if we only have a couple weeks left to live on this earth. It's interesting, in this text, Jesus used three, uses three different Greek words for watch. The first one's easy. He says, watch out. We get that one. But the other two are very similar. One is be on guard. It's like, be alert, be guarding, watching for danger like a guard dog would do. The other one is be alert, which means don't be sleepy. In Africa, where there was no law enforcement of any kind, we lived in a compound. Cement block wall with barbed wire on top. We were gated and barred in on every account. And we had dogs, guard dogs, Dobermans, Rottweilers. They were way better than watchmen. We could have had hired watchmen, too. But they tend to fall asleep. A guard dog doesn't do that. And that's what God wants you to, and me to have, that kind of attitude that we're just on guard. Don't let any danger come near my faith and hurt my faith. Don't let me get tired. But what I find is interesting, how are we supposed to be on guard and be alert? He actually tells us to do something you might not think would be that helpful. Be about the Lord's work. God has given you and me work to do because if we're so occupied doing His work, then we have very little chance to doze off and fall asleep. It's like a man, Jesus said, going away. He leaves his house, he puts his servants in charge, and tells one to watch the door. Well, the man is Jesus, the house is his church, and the servants are you and I who believe in him. It's kind of like that picture from Isaiah. We're these clay pots. Lumps of clay that God has turned into sacred vessels. We're wayward. We're worthless sinners. But Jesus' blood has washed you clean and now made you a vessel to carry his love and his message to others. And remember the reading from Corinthians? He says, you don't lack any spiritual gift as you do that. You ever see pictures of an aircraft carrier? They're huge, aren't they? Just massive. All these planes and compartments. Well, God's church is really a lot like an aircraft carrier, if you think about it. Probably never thought about that, did you? Aircraft carrier just has one purpose, one mission. But all kinds of unique, um, different roles that everybody and everything has to play on that aircraft carrier. God's church... We have one mission, to carry the gospel to others through our words and through our actions of love. But we all have different, unique roles in doing that. So what's your role here on God's aircraft carrier of his church? You ever think about that? If you're a young mother or father, you have the role of bringing your children up in the way of the Lord. If you're elderly and homebound, then you have the unique role of praying way more than anyone else could pray. Do you have leadership skills? Then you have the unique role of serving on council 
or as an elder member? Are you full of compassion? You have the role of being compassionate to others. Are you good at encouraging? You have the role of encouraging others. Are you able to teach? You see where I'm going? The list could go on and on. And if you don't know what your unique role is, ask Dan or ask me. We'll tell you all the different ways our care committee has unique roles for you to serve. But serving isn't always easy, is it? So let me ask you this question. How faithful are you being God's servant, being ready until he comes? Are you and I busy going about the tasks that Jesus has left us to do? Or have we got a little too caught up in our own tasks? It's easy for that to happen, right? And that's why we just simply pray for God's forgiveness. Forgive us the time, dear Lord. I've been too preoccupied with all my tasks to give any thought to the tasks that you have. But here's our wonderful joy. What did Jesus do? He left his throne in heaven not just to make us a servant working in his church. Didn't he leave his throne in heaven to make you a child of God in his house? And so with that forgiveness we have as God's child, we ask him to give us strength to faithfully carry out those roles. But it's not easy. Think about appearance. You not only have to care for the faith of your children, but you've got to take care of your own faith. That's a lot to do. Think of all the times that we're asked to be heavenly minded while we live on this earth. But... Every time we turn around, there's a temptation from Satan or from the world around us or from my flesh that wants me to think of anything but heaven. But think of it. If God gave you grace enough to save you, then won't he give you grace and strength to carry out your roles as you live for him? Think about it. Is the forgiveness of your sins dependent in any way on you? Or is it just dependent on Jesus' blood? The fact that your name is now written in the book of life, did, that have to, did you have to be perfect to get your name in there? Or was Jesus instead perfect for you? Did you have to scratch and claw your way out of the devil's dungeon? Or did God just in his mercy pluck you out of Satan's prison. And did you have to discover this wonderful gospel of grace by your brilliance? Or did the Holy Spirit call you, enlighten you, and bring you to faith? And on that last judgment day, are you going to have to stand there before God on the basis of your own accomplishments? Or can you and I just simply proudly stand there on the basis of Christ's accomplishment for us? If he's given us grace and strength to save us, won't he give you and I grace and strength to be faithful servants as well? And so he promises to actually help us keep watch. You know how? He's given us something like binoculars. Kids, you know what binoculars are, right? You put them up there, you help focus on something far away. Well, God's binoculars are his word and prayer. Think about starting every morning with prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you've kept me this night from all harm and danger. Keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. Into your hands I commit my body and soul and all things. Let your Holy Spirit be with me, that the wicked foe has no power over me. When you start your day with prayer, what are you doing? You're focusing on Jesus and getting ready for his return. Parents, when you say bedtime prayers with your kids, now I lay me down to sleep, what are you doing? You're focusing their eyes on Jesus and his return. And when you say prayers during meals, what are you doing? You're focusing your eyes on Jesus and his return. And when you read the meditation book or the online devotion or your Bible, what are you doing? God's focusing your eyes on Jesus and his return. Or when you merely just think about the truths of salvation during the week as you drive back and forth from work, 
you're focusing your eyes on Jesus and his return. When you lay your sins before Jesus each day in sorrow and trust that he's forgiven you, what are you doing? You're focusing on Jesus and his return. And Jesus is helping get you ready. Think about it, kids. Got your attention once more, kids? Were you there? Raise your hand if you're listening, kids. All right, good. If, you can put them down. Now, think about it, kids. If you're playing hide-and-seek, isn't that one of the easiest games to be ready for? Think about it. When, if you're going to count to 20, when you get to 18, 19, and 20, you know you got to quit running and hide because 20 is the point. It's easy to be ready. <coughs> Excuse me. It's easy to be ready for hide-and-go-seek. And in some ways, it's easy to be ready for Jesus' return. Not in the when. We don't know that. But it's really easy to be ready in the what. Jesus says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Here's the deal. If you remain in me, I'll remain in you. You want to be ready for just Jesus' return? We just need to remain in Jesus. By staying in his word, and he promises to remain in you to keep you in faith till the end. It's really that easy. So Jesus simply says, what I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Amen.